I want my stories to be as real as they can possibly be, to take, because number one, the real world is stranger than anything anybody will ever come up with. And things happen in the real world that you could not do in fiction because no one would believe it. People would go, oh, come on. To only to talk about my own work, a lot of it is based in the senses which horror fiction is particularly good for because a lot of our dreads, a lot of our pleasures come at us through our senses and which you're not going to get in like an amusingly ironic novel about 20 year old editors in New York. My, my first agent who had introduced himself to me uh, on the basis of my short fiction was able to place this book with um, an editor named Jean Cavellis who had a fledgling line of horror novels called Abyss at Dell and they chose the novel to be their leadoff title in that line which at the time I didn't realize how cool that actually was. I just thought wow that's great but I didn't know how, how cool it really was and in retrospect I look back and it makes me proud. I hear edgy a lot. I hear edgy to the point where I like to say you know my ass is sore from sitting on the edge of so many things because I'm always on the edge. People always talk about the stream of consciousness style and I don't I think that's the way we live. I mean I know that's the way we live. You don't get up in the morning and think in a linear fashion. You start out brushing your teeth and the next thing you know, you know you're thinking about what happened when you were three years old. It, nothing moves in a linear way. If you want to, you can stop and go back and go step by step and go, how did I end up thinking about the house I grew up in? Oh, I know, because then I saw this tile and that reminded me of this toothpaste and it was blue and it was blue and the blue was the exact same tile as then there was there and then grandma died and that's how we live, we just don't realize it. Bad Brains was a lot of fun. Actually, Bad Brains was the, a book that I had to do a tremendous amount of research for because I realized that I didn't, I, the, the setup for the book is a guy trips in the parking lot of a 7-Eleven and he sustains a closed head injury that pretty much ruins his life from there on out in slow motion. And I had to do a lot of research for that and a lot of reading and so much of what I read was so fascinating that I wish on a parallel track of my life I could have just kept doing nothing but reading about neurology and how the brain works and how creativity in the brain, how vision functions as a physical component of the brain. And I learned so much. And that's one of the great joys of writing because you get to learn about things that you really love and you get to dig into them and mine into them and find out every little tiny piece of why something works. I don't know that there's a Detroit aesthetic or a Detroit school so much as there is a Detroit attitude, which I think informs the work that I do as a writer in that there's, it, it is a town without pretension. It's a town that knows that you have to work for whatever you get. It's a town that has had to struggle with being taken seriously which I think both the horror genre and young adult, which I also work in, also suffer under those. It's also a town like both those genres that people think they understand at a glance, but they don't. Skin came out in 1993 and it got some really good reviews and it also got some reviews that were not even bad reviews, but very, um, it's like, who would ever care about this? This is such a weird fringe thing to do, to like pierce holes in yourself and put in weird earrings and do things. Who would ever want to do that? That's so weird. And then time progressed and it became this fad and a lot of people did it. And now it's to the point where it's like overdone and everyone's done it. I don't want anybody to ever say, that was nice. That was a good read. You know, I don't give a fuck for a good read. I don't want to read a good read. What is, I don't want to write a good read. What is a good read? A ripping yarn? You know, I don't want to write a ripping yarn or like a whimsical tale of romance. I don't want to do that. Without a reader, a writer is talking to herself. Without a reader, a book is an inner piece of paper. So I would never be able to have the kind of fun that I have and do the work that I do without the expectation of engaged and intelligent and passionate readers out there who complete the circle and who make the conversation with me and I'm very grateful.
to them and I appreciate that because without you, I'm talking to myself and it gets very quiet in the room.